Hey everybody and welcome to issue 63 of the Imperium Magazine. We got some Space Marines. It feels like a long while since we've had some Space Marines. So, in this video, it's obviously going to show us how to paint Ultramarines. I can't paint Ultramarines. Not at the moment anyway. There'll be some models later that I paint in Ultramarines. It's probably going to be the Primarch and maybe Marni Marnius Calgar. Them two for definite will be ultramarine paint scheme because that makes sense. But these marines I'm not doing that way. I thought about doing executioners. Most of them probably will end up as executioners in some separate video for this channel. But ultimately we're going to paint a Mantis Warrior today. But let's get through the magazine first and then we can do the paint. So inside, we're going to get infiltrators are the main focus of the magazine. We learn about the Vanguard Space Marines. We build the Vanguard Space Marines. And then we get some 9th edition rules. So infiltrators are recon and sabotage specialists. Infiltrators operate in the Space Marine Vanguard, the section of the chapter responsible for operating ahead of the main strike force. The Vanguard's duties include reconnaissance, infiltration, Disruption and Sabotage. They are in the Mark 10 Phobos pattern armor. One of them has a Helix Gauntlet, which is basically a Medipack. It's this dude here. Which... I got a feeling I paint him. Is that who I paint? No, I'm painting this guy. It's one of these two. He has a wrist thing, but he did not look like either of them. Who did I paint? Did I paint? Did I build something wrong? Maybe I built something wrong. It doesn't look like either of them. Very strange. Doesn't really matter. But um, yeah, so we get a page on that. You get the battle record for the classic RPG for the game. Then it's straight into building. I have to pause because I got a cop. Obviously, the suppressor comes on the big 40 mil base. Everybody else is on 32s. So we got a strike. A sniper, three marines, and the suppressor. We then learn how to paint them as an ultramarine, a dirty, dirty ultramarine. Actually, I got nothing against them. I think ultramarines are pretty damn cool. I am a second edition kid, so I fondly remember that amazing codex that came out then. I I like ultramarines. They've been pretty cool in the Horus Heresy. I know people hate them because they are the poster boys for. 40k which is a little annoying but that can't be helped somebody has to be the poster boy but anyway if you followed their paint guide you're gonna have something that looks a little like this which if you do good on you mine is gonna look like this and away we go so i primed the model black as you could probably guess and i dry brushed it with the pallid witch flesh so that is all good and ready to go. We're going to kick things off with the orc flesh. Now, I'm looking at this, and you know what? It's too dark. It's just too dark. Look at it. Too dark. That's a great orc flesh color. It is not Mantis Warrior. Ugh. Let me have a look at my paints quick. Okay, we're going to go with the Army Speed Paint orc flesh instead. It's a lot more bright it's a lot more vivid it looks lovely hopefully we can get the green that i'm looking for now i'm looking at the screen and i think it could be brighter so i'm going to mix some of the yellow i aiden contrast paint into it i have no idea if this is going to affect it in any way shape or form but i'm going to splodge these together probably go two green to one yellow for the mixture if you're following along Right, let's see how this looks. It pretty much looks like Orc Flesh still. That yellow probably did not change the color in any way, shape or form. That's comical. I, I don't know, maybe it did. We'll see when it dries. This is looking pretty much like the Orc Flesh. So that was probably a step you don't need to do if you're going to copy my paint guide. If you do copy my paint guide, make sure you hit me up on social media and let me know. Tag me in your finished model. I'd love to share it. I'd love to 
claim that it looks amazing because of my paint scheme. You know, you got to feed my ego. I have probably one of the biggest egos in this room as I record this. So you got to feed it. You got to feed it. Tell me that you love me. Hit the like button. And uh, yeah, I'll shut up now and uh, just slap on this green paint all over. To be honest, I think we're going to skip forward. I'm pretty sure you understand the idea. You want to just swipe it around, make sure you're not streaking, try and avoid any pooling that may happen. And just make sure you get a nice even coat on all the armor. Up next, in some very poorly framed painting, we grab the white scar base paint and we are going to just block in anything that I want to be yellow. I want the yellow to be a lot smoother. I don't want it to look battle damaged or patchy. I want it to be bright. I want it to be bold. I want it to be colorful. So I'm just going to take my time. Ultimately, just blocking in this shoulder pad and his face plate because they're going to be the big bright yellow areas. I wasn't entirely sure how to do his other shoulder. The examples I'd found were full Primus Marines and they Primaris Marines, sorry, and they had the double shoulder guard which obviously was yellow, but then these guys don't have the double shoulder guard. They have like a smaller version on the other side. To me, it made more sense that that would remain green. So that is what I chose to do. I'm also thinking this kind of color would work great for Sons of Medusa. So I might be really cheeky. And in the next Space Marine video we have to do, I might paint Sun and Medusa. Just because I got the rough idea in my head now. We then swiftly move on to the grim black. We are going to use that to pick out anything that needs to be dark. So we're looking at strapping the gun and his backpack and his little antenna that he has on his backpack and on his helmet. This is a pretty straightforward step. I'm laying down this color. It's going to Get a hit of metallic later for the metals. The bolt gun itself will probably be a dark red later on. So yeah, I'm just making sure I got a good solid black base coat on it all. By this stage, I am absolutely in love with this marine. I am loving the green. I the black looks great. That's something that you rarely ever hear me say. I find black to be one of the dullest colors to paint. But then when I put down this Iaden yellow, I can really see the scheme starting to come together. And the draw to do an entire unit of Mantis Warriors, it's so strong. The pull is strong within me. I think it would be so bright and colourful and really stand out on the tabletop. Don't get me wrong, I love my executioners. And if the Badab War hadn't have happened, I would have done Tyrant Legion or the Astral Claws, depending on who you want to call them. I would have done them as my main force. But look at this model. I absolutely love it. It's also a bit of me that wants to do is that the Tranquility Death World scheme where they're all yellow with the black triangle camo going on. That might have to be a future video. Who knows, that could be a real fun one to paint. But just look at it, it looks so good. I then now grab the lead belcher. And I'm just going to go around slowly picking out anything metallic-y. It's mostly going to be the gun and the aerial. But we're just going to take our time, not get too messy here. Just work my way around. There's some buckles on his straps that I'm going to pick out as well. But pretty clean, pretty easy step. With the metallic now dry, I grab the flesh tier of contrast and I am just picking out his eyes very softly. I don't want to flood into the yellow. I am absolutely enthralled by this model. I'm going to pick out its computer screen just to give it a little pop of color. It's not bright. These guys are technically meant to be saboteur reconnaissance. Marines, even though they are in bright green, they technically should be sneaking around a little bit. And then I'm also going to pick out the 
gun casing in this nice red that's going to look pretty dark because it's going over a black but it's just giving it that nice little pop of colour and to be honest that's pretty much it green, yellow, black and red that's all I used, four colours real nice what we are going to try and do on camera and I may regret this because now that I've seen it it's, it's perfectly fine for a one-off model I would recommend getting transfers but I am going to show you how I attempted the chapter symbol it's not my greatest work but I'm pretty happy with it so we will have that in the video step one involved getting a bad and black and drawing two straight lines now I suffer from the shakes so this is very hard for me I'm going to try and draw some mandibles and then we'll wrap around for its eyes I, I try to make it look symmetrical I try my hardest but this isn't for me I'm not a freehand painter this is very hard with the shakes but we'll skip forward a little bit so you can see what it looks like but ultimately I use the black to try and mask out the shape of the mantis and then I use some contrast red for the eyes of it and through the power of editing you come back pretty close to the end like it's not terrible it's obviously not a masterpiece but it will do for me it will do I'm sure if I was painting a whole army of these I would want transfers or special 3d printed chapter symbols but let's be fair for a one-off model with a little bit of freehand I'm pretty happy with it it looks good enough I like it I'm actually I am proud of it it's been a while I could have practiced on a bit of paper beforehand but I just dive straight on in to do it and you know what I'm happy with it so there you go I just got the base to do but let's take some glamour shots and get back to the magazine cheers for watching the power of my own sound effects hopefully you enjoyed the uh, mantis warrior paint scheme if you did you know what to do drop a like hit subscribe leave a comment down below and also check out some of these other videos i'm gonna try and put here you should check out that playlist i got loads of great paint guides right we then have the eliminator squad 9th edition rules a tutorial on how to use a sniping and mortis rounds in the hyper brag round, I nearly said fang, and the executioner round. We then learn about the infiltrator squad, the su suppressor squad. The suppressor squad. I do apologize, I cannot talk as per usual. We then get taught how to use the helix gauntlet, suppressing fire. And finally, we're into a battle. The crucial resupply. The Imperial forces have gained a foothold, and now they are pinned down by the Necron gun batteries. The goal of this mission is for the Necrons to impede the advance and for the Space Marines to recover their supply drops. The weapon drops is the mission. Got to use the big, big map. That's a 44 by 30. You roll... Oh, here you go. Look at this. You roll different dice and it tells you where to place the objectives. That's pretty cool. If you control it, you get five victory points. Oof. That's a pretty fun mission. Very random. You don't know where stuff's going to land. You also have your secondaries. You are playing at 50 power points. That's pretty cool. Then hopefully next week, if I can get these built and painted in time, we will have the Necron death marks up and running followed by more Space Marines. So make sure you are following along, hit that bell and for the notifications, and catch me next week. Cheers for watching.